Okay, so we've been moving right along in chapter three, but it might be a good time to back up and see what everything we've been doing and why we've been doing it and try to put it all together. And what it comes down to is I'm giving you some kind of function, some kind of polynomial equation. And I'm saying, okay, can you graph this? Can you give me information about it that you know may be useful somewhere along the line? But again, where does this come from? Well, this comes from a bunch of dots, you know, and an equation was made. And if we go all the way back to section one, one of the first things we did was we know we know this is a U. Okay, the shape of a parabola is a U, except it goes on infinitely on both sides. And we took this guy and we started saying, I, I could do the basics. I could say, you know, what is the x-intercept? What is the y-intercept? And I could plug those values in. And one of the things I know when I plug it in is, that's a zero, that's a zero, oh, 18. So on my graph, I actually have the point zero, 18. That's this, and we call this the constant term. Hopefully all that sounds good. So if I was actually graphing and I'm going, yeah, no, I don't want to go, uh, I can do anything I want in a graph, 5, 10, 15, and 20. And down here I go 0, 5, and 10. And I know I have a point 0, 18 on my graph. Kind of happy about that. Okay, so that was one of the groups of important points, the intercepts. You know, I have an intercept here, and I don't know after that. Because after that, this could be a U shape down, which means I'd have two X intercepts. We talked about a U shape where maybe I come down and touch and go back up, or maybe this is just a floaty that goes up in the air. Okay. Where did some of that information come from? Well, let's go back up to this guy. And I'm armed with coming into this, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of this over 2a. And what is this? Well, this is actually what happens when y equals zero. So if I made y zero, Okay, this is finding my x-intercepts. Uh, we call them x-intercepts. We call them roots. We call them zeros. They had a whole bunch of different names. Okay, so the, to find these sometimes was a little bit of work. I could just plug the values for a, b, and c in over here and find them. I could try to factor this guy which is good. There were lots of different things that we did. All right. Well, one of the things we did was we said, okay, we got this guy going and, and maybe I can factor it. And, and that would just be great. Okay. Let's see, zero equals, and again, I'm putting all kinds of stuff on this example. Three X squared minus three X plus 18. And your factoring skills from way back said, you know what, I'm going to divide this by negative three because I can. I'm not just going to do it willy-nilly. I see a negative three, a negative three, and it'll go in there. And, you know, this is going back old school, and that's going to be plus X and minus six. And I could factor it, hopefully, into X plus three, X minus two. And I know that X would equal negative three when I set that equal to zero by the zero product property. And I know that X would equal two. So two more things on my graph, if I really wanted to. And again, if I can factor, fantastic. There it is. I could come back down to my graph, one, two, negative three, and I could go out to positive two, okay? Now, a couple of things that we learned as we went along. Because the leading coefficient, leading coefficient, 
Leading co-op <laughs> leading coefficient is negative three. We identified that. We knew the degree was two. So because the degree was two, I knew that this was a parabola and it was U-shaped. That was one of my parent functions. Y equals X squared. Okay. Another one was Y equals X cubed. So I have an idea of what all these are going to look like. Because the degree is two, the leading coefficient was negative. I knew that degree two, either they both, the end behavior was up here and up here. But because it's negative, I know my end behavior is going to go down there and down there. And we talked about end behavior. Okay. So that's a, that's some clues to help me with what my graph is going to look like. Good. Still have a bunch of things going here. All right, so I had my end behavior. Now I have my graph here and yeah, it looks like it's gonna go way up and come way back down. Well, we had a point up here, which was a maximum. Something good happened and I got my maximum. And you'll hear that word referred to a lot when you're looking to find the vertex, okay? The vertex. Now, vertex, there's a couple of different ways we could find this. First of all, I can look down here. I know my parabolas are always going to be symmetrical. So in the middle of these two points would be the X value for my vertex, where my maximum is occurring. Well, halfway between negative three and positive two is negative one half. So if I really wanted to, by this um, halfway rule, since I know, since I know my intercepts halfway between them, that's like the average, that's going to be negative one half. And if that's my x value, I would plug it in and I'd find the y value. So another important point over here is going to be at negative one half something. So that was one way to find the vertex. The second way to find the vertex we did was we talked about this thing called vertex form. And some of you are going, oh yeah, I kind of remember that, but let's, let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna take my original equation, y equals negative three x squared minus three x plus 18, and I'm gonna put it in vertex form. And we had some steps to do that. I don't know if you remember them all. First thing was, I was going to say, hey there, constant term, you go away. Go down there and sit. Because in order to put this in vertex form, I need to complete the square. So the first thing was, shove that constant term out of the way. Second thing, Factor out from these two terms. That negative three. Sometimes I won't have it. Sometimes I will. A little bit of a quick review. If I had x squared plus 6x, what did I put over here to complete the square? Well, I had a phrase, and I'm doing a lot, all the talking here because I want to keep it moving uh, so we can get into our stuff for today. Half it and squared. So half of six was three. When I squared it, it was a nine. That gave me x plus three, x plus three, so that I would have a perfect square. So this one's not so pretty. That's okay. What's half of one is one half. And when I square one half, I get one fourth. I got one fourth. What I really introduced on this side isn't one fourth, because if I went back up a step, it would be negative three times this. So boom, boom, boom. That would be negative three fourths, which means I have to also add three fourths. Ooh. Completing the square puts me in vertex form. My half it, 
was one half. And this is going to be, I'm just going to write 18 and three fourths. My vertex form, y equals a x minus h squared plus k. My h is negative one half. Yeah, I did already know that negative one half from over here. Cool, that worked out well. So my vertex form was, I'm gonna bring this back, negative three x plus one half squared, y equals negative three x plus one half squared plus 18 and three fourths. Whew. Here's my H, negative one half. Here's my K. So I know that it's going up a little bit higher over here. You know, now I have some points. I could start to graph them. And, and I have a pretty good idea what that graph's going to look like. So that was the vertex. And these were all nice and easy. Early on, everything was going, going well for me. Again, I apologize for the sloppy handwriting. I'm excited. Now, some things we learned. Part of this equation in here, if I was using this to find my x-intercepts, what's inside of the square root became important. B squared minus 4AC was called the discriminant. If this was a positive number, I could take its square root and then I would have two answers or two x-intercepts. So if it was positive, I had two real x-intercepts. Remember the discriminant helped me find x-intercepts. Told me there were two positive. If this was zero, the plus or minus basically goes to nothing. So if this is zero, I had one real. And finally, my last choice is if this b squared minus 4ac was a negative, then I would have imaginary. So when it was negative, I had imaginary. And you know, I knew it wasn't going to cross the x-axis anywhere. So we talked about the discriminant. Yeah, we did. We talked about a whole lot of stuff. But again, here, that vertex, I'm going to write it again. That's my maximum. Or if it opens up, concave up and holds water, that would be a minimum. If we were in a classroom and had time, I'd have one gigantic worksheet and put you in groups and have you go through step by step putting all this together. But all of this is what we were learning so far in chapter three. So we had some other things going on. What if I said, um, you know, I had this guy, y equals x minus two squared, x plus one, and x minus three, oh, where's my x minus three cubed? Say so I gave you that equation. And I said, tell me what this graph behavior looks like. Because I was able to factor this. This was sweet. I was able to factor it. Well, let's see. Here's two terms, one term, that's three and three more. That's six terms. So I know this guy's even. And I don't see any negative coefficients. So I know it's going to do something like that. I know it's end behavior looks like that. Something happens at positive two right there. So my roots, my zeros, whatever you want to call them, my first one is two. It has a multiplicity of two because there's two of them. So as a result, I know I'm just going to touch my graph. So at two, it's just going to touch. My next root, if I set this equal to zero, is negative one. Its multiplicity is one, so it's going to cross. And my third root is positive three. Positive three. 
its multiplicity is three. So it's also going to cross because it's odd. So I kind of know at negative one, I'm crossing. And it looks like since I'm starting up there, I'm going to come down this way. At positive two, I touch. So I'm going to have something going like that. And at positive three, I cross. Good. That makes my end behavior make sense. So my graph is going to do something along the lines of come down, hit up there, come back down, turn again and go up. Because I was able to factor and I know all the roots. Okay, did all that. We did something along the lines of this, y equals two x to the fourth minus three x cubed plus x squared minus x plus six. And we're going, oh goodness gracious. Yeah, I'd love to be able to turn this gigantic monster into what I just did, because it's going to help me understand the graph and be able to graph it and its behavior and, and all those things. But I don't know where to start. Well, we did something called the rational zero theorem. And I know rational is a ratio. And it, I'm hoping to find a zero. What do we do? Oh, that was the one where I took P and that was the constant term. And I said, what are its factors? Plus or minus one, two, three, and six. Then my Q was my leading coefficient. Its factors were one and two. And from this rational zero theorem, I got what I called good guesses. And these are good guesses to be able to divide a number into here. And it was the fraction P over Q, plus or minus one over one, two over one, three over one, six over one, one over two, two over two, which is one, we already have that, three over two. So those were my rational zero theorem, my good guesses of numbers that might become factors. And what do I mean by that? Oh yeah, I took long division and converted it into synthetic division. Two, negative three, one, negative one and six. And I said, oh boy, I'm gonna see if one of these numbers divides into it. If it does, X minus whatever that number is, X minus the C is one of the factors which would help me up above. Somebody just pick a number and we'll run through this one time. <clears throat> Where's my hairbrush? Anybody have a number they want to try? One. One, because that's the loneliest number. Okay, well, I'm just kidding. One. So I'm going to take one and plug it in. Bring down the two. Multiply by one, add, then multiply by one, add, nice, then multiply by one, mm -hmm. add, then multiply by one, oh, five. So that didn't work very well. I wanted that to be a zero. But what I do know, since I have this information, is one of the points on my graph is going to be one five. What? How do you know that? Because I'm, I, oh, no, wait a minute. If I came back up here, I also had something called the remainder theorem. And that was if I plug a number in, like one, if I got a zero out, that was fantastic. If I plug one in here, I get two minus three plus one minus one plus six. Uh, yep, I got a remainder of five. So these all tied together as well. And we did some problems with the rational zero theorem and we talked about graphing and, and things like that. If I told you, 
my roots, my x-intercepts. One of them was at two, and the other one was at one minus i. I know there has to be another one, don't I? Where would that other one have to be? Well, we had something called the conjugate pair. If one minus i is a root, then one plus i has to be a root. So they come in conjugate pair. So then I did something like this, y equaled x minus the first root, x minus the second root, x minus the third root. And I multiply all these together to get a polynomial. But I also understood there could be a little a out there, some number that was factored out way back when. Ooh. All right, Jesse, did I cover everything that you had questions on? Yeah, that clears a lot of it up. I was like, I was going through all the explanations and stuff yeah. on Alex, and I just, I still couldn't get it. Right. So we just had to stop and pause and go back and put everything together a little bit more. How, did it, how does everything interact? when I'm talking about graphs. And I, and I have f of x equals something, you know, and can I get a little deeper understanding of what's going on? So, did anybody want me to finish this guy? Keep going. No? Okay. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful good. I don't know if that's the word. Today, doo 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 doo. Section three five, and I'm going. Yeah, oh boy, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, okay, let me start out. Today we're going to look at rational functions. That's good to know, because rational functions means it's a function that's written as a ratio, and that means there's something in the top, and there's something in the bottom. Something up top involving x and something down here involving x. x plus 2, x squared minus 9. Lots of things going on. A rational function. Well, in the world of rational functions, we have these things called asymptotes that show up. And an asymptote is something that could possibly look like well, let's see. You've seen graphs and you've never really thought a whole lot about them. And, you know, on these graphs, when we start dealing with rationals, we have a couple things happen. Sometimes we'll get a horizontal asymptote. It's undefined in that area. Sometimes we might get a vertical asymptote. And sometimes we might get a slant asymptote. Okay, so we have horizontal ones, we have vertical ones, we have slant ones. Sometimes we'll see two of them on a graph together. That's pretty common. And our graph will normally approach an asymptote, but not cross it. And we may end up with something that looks like this. We may have a graph that goes yeah, nah, 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 nah. that you know is is uh, all kind of crazy stuff can happen. So we can have all these different combinations of asymptotes. So we're going to start out looking at the easiest one, and the the one I wrote on that piece of paper was the function, you know, it's y equals, and it was one that looked along the lines of x plus two over x squared minus nine. And having worked with these functions before, but not really graphing them, right away an alert goes up to me. Why? Because I'm not allowed to divide by zero. So I'm gonna take care of the denominator first. 
okay? The denominator first. Well, if I look at the, oh boy, in the denominator, x squared minus nine equals zero is bad. Uh, this is x plus three, x minus three. And when I solve this, I'm going, well, x equals negative three or x equals three. And because this is a rational function and I have these two, I'm going, oh crap, I can't put negative three in. I can't put positive three in. I got my sound effect. So when I draw this, one, two, three, one, two, three, I know I have, because it's in the denominator, kind of deal going on. Okay. I'm blocking off negative three and I'm blocking off positive three. So this is how I find my, this is how we do, this is how I find what's called a vertical asymptote. It's all about the denominator. Now, there are other ones. Well, we're gonna go slow with this because um, <clears throat> we're going to get some lingo and some things going on here as we go, but I wanted to do that quick uh, example. So a rational function, a function over a function, like x minus one over x minus three. Right away, I'm going, beep, 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 beep. We, got, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, it can't be three. And look, if I come over one, two, three, there it is. No, 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 no. Okay, it's an asymptote. Now, they do a little bit of lingo. Oh, something's going on at one there as well. And, and I don't know if it's because the minus one or not, but it's not. So don't, don't worry about that yet. Okay. Some math lingo. As X goes to zero, wait, this is Y, right? That's Y. As my X values, get closer and closer to infinity. Where's Y going? Well, here's X heading out to infinity, right? My X's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Where is my Y values? They are approaching one. As X get bigger, what are my Y's getting closer to? One. As my x goes to negative infinity, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, what are my y's getting closer and closer to? They're getting closer and closer to one. So this is just asking the behavior of the y values. What are they approaching? This guy, it's a little different. He says his x approaches three from the positive side. Well, here's the x value three. And as I'm getting closer and closer to three from this side, it looks like my Y's are gonna go crazy and go all the way up to infinity. To infinity and beyond. Thank you, thank you. As X approaches the value three from the negative side, it looks like my Y values are going to negative infinity. Boy, they're just bad infinity signs. So we talk about N behavior and so forth. And again, some of you, half of you are going on to calculus. This becomes really important when you get there. Okay. Oh boy, what is this? Identifying vertical asymptotes as x goes to c from the positive side, this goes to infinity. One. Hopefully you're working ahead. Here's an example. As x goes to c from the negative side, it's going to positive infinity. Now that I do these and see what the author is, uh, Coming up with this, okay, yeah. 
X approaches C from the positive side, we're going to negative infinity. As X approaches C from the negative side, we go, and again, I apologize. I normally do not like to talk this much because I can see where it gets boring on your end. I'm trying to put a whole bunch of stuff together. All right, so let's, you can do these three. I'm gonna take a drink of water. Identify the vertical asymptotes, if any. So vertical is when does my denominator equal zero? When does my denominator equal zero? Now, sports fans, I'm pretty good with these guys. I need to be able to factor it. Vertical asymptotes. The line x equals five means all of my x's are fives. And x equals negative one. How are we doing time wise? We're okay. Uh, let's see. x squared minus 2x. Minus three, when does that equal zero? Nothing really special happening there. Again, we have two of them. We have two of them. Yeah, I can't factor that. Can't touch that. Hammer time. All right, not so bad. Vertical down, that was one of the three. That wasn't so bad. All right, next one is a horizontal. We have the and the line was about the graph of the process of the As x goes to infinity, f of x goes to d. I have something like that going on. Not sure why there's two graphs there. Well, because I screwed up the first one. <laughs> As X goes to positive infinity, I'm sorry. Someone was just about to ask me that question, weren't they? So I know it's either going to be coming from the bottom and getting close to that line, or it's going to be coming from the top and get close to that line. Over here, as I go to negative infinity, you know, again, it's either going to come from the bottom. Now I know why there's two, not because it's built in for screwing up, or it's going to come from the top. It's going to come from one of those two. All of this is because we have these stinking rational functions. All right, a whole lot of words there and symbols and so on and so on. But this is how I figure out if I'm going to have any horizontal asymptotes. So up above here, I have an N. That's important, and I have an M, okay? An N and an M. If N is greater than M, there's no horizontal asymptote. If N is greater than M, uh, I need, if N is, so if I have Y equals X to the 11th over X to the ninth, according to this, there is no horizontal asymptote. 
if n is less than n, y equals x cubed over x to the fifth, the n is less than m, I have this guy, um, then the line y equals zero is the asymptote. And finally, if I have n and m, they're the same, then the constant terms are my, so if I have three x to the fifth, blah, 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 over two x to the fifth, blah, 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 looks like my asymptote is gonna be three over two, my horizontal. All right, can we put those in, in my words somehow? We have three cases. Walk, 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 walk. The first case, f of x, I'm gonna go y equals, let's come up with an equation. 2x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus x over x cubed minus 2x plus 1. This guy is bigger than this guy. This guy is bigger than this guy. Agreed? So what do I have? The numerator's degree is bigger than the denominator's degree. I have no, none, none, none. Again, this time I'm finding horizontal asymptotes. If I have y equals two x cubed minus three x squared plus x, divided by x to the fifth plus one. What was my horizontal asymptote when this degree is smaller than this degree? It's gonna be the line y equals zero. Uh, Nah, 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 nah. It's going across there somewhere. And finally, what if I had the degrees the same? 2x to the fifth minus 3x squared plus x over 6x to the fifth plus 2x plus 1. My horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 2 over 6. or one third. So that means if I have a graph at the value one third, I would have a horizontal asymptote. Still me talking, I'm just talking too much. So this is to find my horizontal asymptotes. This first one is going to be a little tricky. We're not giving up on him yet. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see what we have. Identify the horizontals. What say ye for number one? Or actually, it's number five. Well, I'm looking at what I'm going to think. I'm going to put none. I'm going to put none because, well, maybe not none. What is it? This was my second case. This was my y equals zero case. Oh, look at the graph, how pretty. Here it is, it's going across y equals zero. I also know three, and negative three, those two guys are asymptotes. Check that out. My denominator can't be three or negative three. Negative three, 
my numerator. Degree is smaller than I'm, all right. Now I'm really, I'm actually starting to bore myself a little bit. For the next one, write down the horizontal, write down the vertical. Should match this graph somehow. Should match that graph. Horizontal, since these two are the same, it's three over one. So that should be y equals three, right? There's three, yeah, nah, 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 nah. Got that. Vertical asymptotes, one's the denominator. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. That fits the graph. Now this last one, Again, I have the same vertical asymptotes at that three and negative three, but this time I don't have any perfectly horizontal asymptotes, but this is where my next one comes into play. And I get something that looks like that, okay? That's called a slant asymptote. Oh man, can you please stop with the excitement? Yes. I will stop with the excitement. We're gonna talk about that down here in a minute. All right, what I want you to do is check that bad boy out. Just draw the, the X, Y coordinates, put the asymptotes in. That's all I want you to do. Nothing more major than that. So let's see, these are the same. So I know there's going to be a horizontal at two. Denominator, x squared minus 3x minus 4, x minus 4, x plus 1. 4 and negative 1. How would I graph it from here? I'd pick points, but I'd be willing to bet it's going to look a lot like the one right above it. It's going to be curves and curves and, you know, approaching those asymptotes. Okay, so now I'm going to come back and I'm going to edit my notes over here. I got the idea of vertical. Yeah, it's okay. The denominator is zero. Denominator is zero. I can remember that. These guys get a little goofy. All right, this one's not so bad. If the degrees are the same, it's the coefficients. Cool, got that. This guy, I have an x to the fifth term down here. What's my x to the fifth term up here? Well, I don't have one, which means the number in front of it is zero. So if I thought of this guy as having an x to the fifth term and this x to the fifth term, zero over one, like this guy, gives me just zero. <gasps> okay, so I can use this concept to get that guy, yeah. Because I make the degrees the same and I have zero over 
one, so it's just zero. Can't make these the same because I'd have zero down here and it would be undefined. But these two I can check off pretty quick. One third because of x to the fifth, x to the fifth. Zero over one because of x to the fifth and x to the fifth. Here I can't have an x to the fourth because it would be zero and I can't have two over zero, I can't divide by zero. But this guy becomes something called a slant asymptote. This is my group three. My first group was verticals. My second group was horizontals. Horizontal here, and all I need to do is make matching degrees, two over six, zero over one. It covers my horizontal. Now my slant. Uh-oh, I don't have room on that piece of paper, do I? My slant. If I have an equation that looks like this, y equals x squared plus 3x minus 1 divided by x minus 2. OK, so now this is bigger. So now I have a slant. I know. It's a lot of work just for asymptotes. Because again, if I made an x squared term down here and made it 0 x squared, I can't do 1 over 0. So here's how I actually find the slant asymptote. I divide. Denominator in the numerator. I need x. That gives me x squared minus 2x. I'm going to subtract, which I know is add the opposites. I get 5x minus 1. Plus 5 gives me 5x minus 10. I subtract, which is add the opposite. And I get nine, which means nothing to me. But my slant asymptote is that guy right there. Y equals X plus five. So for this problem, I need to graph the line Y equals X plus five. So what's the graph of y equals x plus 5? I don't even know anymore. Well, we're going to make it easy. If I put 0 in for x, y is 5. If I put 0 in for y, x is negative 5. So there and there. And here is my slant asymptote. Slant asymptote. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I taught for quite a few years. I just can't think of any other way to make this uh, a little more exciting than it is. So, what would my slant asymptote be here? I'd have to do long division. Again, my numerator is bigger than my denominator. So it's going to be a slant. I would have to take x squared minus 9, divide it into 3x cubed, and I'm going to put in plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 0. Aye, 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 aye. 3x gives me 3x cubed minus 27x. I subtract which I know is add the opposites for polynomials. I get 27x. Oh, 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 oh. I put that in a wrong spot, didn't I? Yes, should be 27x here, okay? So that's 27x and I can't get another one. So y equals 3x would be my slant asymptote for this guy. Mercy, mercy, no more, no more. Oh, somebody came late. Who came late? Was it Macy? No. Was it Slade? Yes. 
is there a hope here today? There's no, there's no hope today. Gabby told me she was going to be out. There's no Abby, right? Oh, Abby, you're here. And Tim will, no hope. So let's see what we got. You got you gotta have to do some practice with this. And I got oh boy. Oh boy. I have intercepts. Oh, I'm turning this up. There we go. I have intercepts. I have asymptotes. All this is trying to figure is I have symmetry. I have oh boy, plots and points. Can you graph this? I'm going to pause the recording, give you about three or four minutes, see if you can get, all right. Let's see if it matches what you have. Uh, X squared minus X minus five, horizontal. I looked at the denominator, I got six and negative one. Anybody else get that? Yep. Yep. Good. My vertical. The x squared over the x squared, one over one, y equals one. No, 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 no. Maybe you did learn something today. Next thing I need to do is pick some points. Oh boy. I picked negative two right on this side. I picked zero right on that side. I picked five and seven. And I picked another number in between. So then I had to do all kind of algebra. I put negative two and I get one eighth out. So I get a number over in here. So my guess is it's gonna look something like that. Okay, I picked negative two. I got one eighth was be below that line. So I know it's gonna look something like that. If I take a look at seven, 37 eighths, well, that's bigger than one. This guy is going to look something like this. It's going to be up in that region. So because of the values I picked and plugged them in by what their Y values were, it kind of helped me see what's going on. Zero was down here. Ooh. Uh, two was up here at one fourth. Five was up at 15, six. So by their general behavior, I'm gonna say it looks like something along those lines. Picking points, getting their values below one, above one, different things like that. Questions. You're all doing great for an eight o'clock class. Yeah, horizontal, the vertical, and the pick one. I'm gonna have you do another one. We're not too far from the end. The end is near. Not too far from the end. Number 12, number 12. Do you wanna go back in the rooms or you want a minute to try yourself? First person that tells me something, that's what we'll do. Rooms or self? Self. Selves? All right. So we'll just stay right here. Y'all take a look at that. Let's see, I'm going to start. We got the horizontal. Woo, woo. 
Again, if I made a squared term down here, it would be zero X squared. Can't divide by zero. This is my slant. All right, so now I'm doing a slant. For real? Yeah. thing is negative two and anything that happens after I do that negative two blah 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 really doesn't matter anymore because I just found my slant asymptote y equals two x minus two y intercept is negative two slope is rise two run one rise two run one Something looks like that. And again, this was y equals 2x minus 2. OK. Just wanted to get one with the slant asymptote in. Now, of course, you would pick some points, see where some of these regions are. Points to pick. Uh, remember, these are, uh, you know, that was a bad, because these are in groups of three. That really wasn't my correct one. It actually should have been something negative two, a little more bizarre. I don't know why they did this crazy graph where they go by threes, because I did the first one by threes and then the second one by twos. But then you would pick some points and then find out what region we would be in. But coming up with the slant. And there's oh transform yeah oh boy, we could spend time on that. Uh, Rashi, here's an application. You know you come up with this formula because you have a graph that looks like what's down here below. I know x cannot equal negative twelve. That explains that break there, I have 50 over one. That would, be, that would be my horizontal, yeah, right through there. And then here's down through one. I have my asymptotes in that actual formula. Yeah. So all these things exist out there. Helps to be able to understand what's going on. Look over that stuff that we covered today. Um, we have a test coming up soon, but easily, definitely start with questions beginning the next class. Next class, we do 3 6. Tuesday is 3 7. Then we'll start 4, but the following Tuesday is the chapter 3 test. So we're looking at April 5th. April 5th, we're looking for that next test. Semester's just flying along. All right.